A lot of you know Adam Beach in Manitoba. Anishinaabe Soto actor known far and wide for his roles in Hollywood movies and on TV. If you go way back, Dance Me Outside, remember? Uh, TV's North of 60, uh, major Tinseltown films, Wind Talkers, Flags of Our Fathers, Cowboys and Aliens, my personal, uh, like one of my favorites that I just love on a Saturday afternoon to put on and kick my feet up and watch and have a good smile. Uh, Adam Beach was born in Manitoba, of course, uh, deep ties to Winnipeg's West End, uh, and but also to Dog Creek Reserve near Lake Manitoba. Beach now calls Las Vegas home. I hope I'm still right with that. Uh, but as you heard, he's in Winnipeg today and in studio and going to be speaking to the Manitoba Indigenous Law Students Association. Uh, thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you very much, Marcy. You've been doing a lot of speaking, right? Uh, specifically to uh, different uh, young people across Canada, in fact. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that, some of that work you're doing now. Well, when I was younger, in my 20s, uh, there's this excitement of the movies I do. So I would, you know, visit communities and kind of inspire them. And then over the years, I realized that, you know, uh, my, my, I guess... Uh, what I talk about now is how we as Native people have normalized trauma. And we have to figure out how to get out of that. Because if we're going to put us in a, in, in a situation where we're stuck and uh, we don't want to get out of it because we're used to that stucky feeling, then we're not going to you know, heal. We're not going to, you know, help the next generation. So that's kind of where I'm at now. Tell me what you mean when you say uh, normalized trauma, where you see examples of that. Um, well, you know, um, take, for instance, when I was 14, you know, I decided I'm going to go live on my own. So I ended up living with a couple of heroin addicts who took care of me. They were in their 30s. And for me, being around um, uh, their you know, watching them in their d drug use uh, and kind of being around their friends, it was very normal to me. And they were Native, and I grew up in an uh, alcohol alcoholic family background, and I was fortunate enough, not fortunate enough, but I mean, when my parents died, it took me out of this element of, of, of trauma. And my whole life, it's been like almost like a, a survival instinct. And even today, uh, when I go to therapy, they have to remind me, Adam, you're not in survival mode anymore. You're not, that's not you. You're a movie star. And I'm like, oh my God, what the heck's going on? Why do I think like this, that I still have to survive on the streets? And that's normalizing trauma. It wires one's brain. Right. Yeah. And then you kind of learn as you get older. I'm like 49 now and I find that I, uh, what I'm learning um, is what that means. And I think that it almost when you become older is you kind of start going through your childhood again in your head, whether you plan to do that or not. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, I get that. I get that. Um, tell me a little bit about uh, talking to Indigenous law students specifically, uh, how, how this group will law be part of the conversation today in any way? Mm -hmm. I think with uh, Indigenous law, the quote I gave them was, uh, it's, it's all about our identity. And if we lose the identity, we lose our, our place as law-abiding citizens, basically. There are rules that the government has, and it's like if you're not hunting, if you don't speak your language, or you're not enjoying the culture, you're not Indian anymore. So they've already tagged us, and it's almost like, you know, over the last 200 years, they've been trying to assimilate and eradicate this idea of what an Indian is so they can become citizens, etc. And it's like in 1982, we were part of the Constitution Act, where they said, you're right, we're going to, you guys are sovereign, you know, and it's like, okay, that was in 82. I was born in 72, so we still have a lot to go down the road. And right now, there's so much money being released for residential schools, Jordan Principal, etc., land claims, etc. And when you put a market or a dollar figure for the whole world to see, we're going to invest $3 billion into communities. One, you're going to have lawyers who are non-Indigenous who know how to get that money and who have taken a percentage in illegal ways because of that money's there. 
uh, um, and also it sends a message to drug addicts, drug users, uh, to bring in uh, this, 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 these items to communities. How are you going to stop this? You know, and it's all a legal effect that that takes precedence. And I'm hoping these young law students that are coming out can actually, you know, open their heart for change and not just have a monetary value attached to everything. You can have change and a monetary value, but then there's a monetary value that has to stop. Like one of the, about seven, eight years ago, I was offered $98.4 million to be the spokesperson for native oil in Canada. And that's against everything I believe in because I'm a pipe carrier. I've been traditional for a long time now. And I just laughed and said no and said, you don't really know who I am, do you? But let's enjoy this dinner. And they bought me at a charity. Mm -hmm. And these are those examples of monetary values and everything. You know, I'd never sell my soul f for anything. What, what gives you hope uh, in Manitoba? Obviously, you haven't, you know, lived here like daily in a long time, but uh, your roots are still here. You come mm -hmm. back here frequently enough and, and know the community. Um, and so you've watched it. Uh, change too, yeah. right? Ebb and flow, and right now, lots of struggle out there, uh, but some hope. Yeah. Where do you see hope here in this province now? Well, the hope for me right now is Wab Canoe. Wab Canoe, the married, new premier. Yeah, uh, he's the new premier, and he's uh, cousin related through marriage through my cousin Lisa, who's a doctor. And I found myself in this place where I have never never would have thought a native person would have a leadership in position the farthest would probably be afn the negotiating table for all communities and i had to take a step back and realize that you know i'm i'm in this trauma phase normalizing trauma that i would never see this now that i've seen it his position has changed my whole overall uh, outlook of where I belong in my identity. So my focus now is Manitoba. My focus now is my community. My focus now is healing. And I want to reach all these communities to find out what I can do. Wob's a busy man right now. And his position, he's making changes in the upper table. So him being elected, actually, even though you've had, uh, as you obviously, such success in your own life and, and uh, momentum in your own life, and you have inspired a lot of people, and you continue to go across and do that giving work, uh, both culturally and also motivationally, as you're speaking to students all over Canada and all over the place, it even still, that election of him spoke to you in a different way. Yeah, dream big. Dream bigger. And his position, his next position is prime minister. I don't know if he's going to go there. But for the first time in my life, I see the picture of a future prime minister. Whether it's him or not, I can see a Native man, a Native woman in that position. It's unbelievable what, what, uh, what changed in my whole mindset. Mm -hmm. Um, before you go this morning, because there's never enough time to have these conversations, yeah. but do you have anything else coming up that you're working on that you wanted to talk about that is, uh, you know, really important to the fabric of, uh, of, of, of where you're going with your own life? Yeah, well, right, like today, it's the 28th of November. My Aunt Elaine Mayhem is her birthday's today. Oh! And I gave a celebrated birthday out to all my other uncles and aunts. And I forgot her. Well, we can we can do that for you for sure. So yeah, <laughs> Elaine, happy birthday. I'm here and I'm going to find you at home. I don't know if you're listening, but I'm going to bring you a cake. I'm going to sing you a song because I sent songs to my aunts and uncles. And I love that. Yeah. I love that. But other than that, I'm just... Uh, do you want to sing now before you go? Elaine, happy birthday to you. I love you. And uh, I'll see you real soon. Uh, Adam Beach, always lovely to have you back here in Manitoba. It's clear that you've, uh, you know, not only not forgotten where you started from, but also yeah. that uh, you're still very much connected to, play, to this place. Yeah, uh, Manitoba is beautiful, man. I, I wish people could look outside the struggles uh, and see the foundation that's really laid here. And uh, you, you don't get to see it until you visit other 
countries, other cities. And then when you come, come home, back. you realize what you have that's really good here. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming in. Pleasure's mine. That's Adam Beach, uh, of course, uh, who will be uh, having a conversation, as we mentioned, with Indigenous law students today. Uh, everyone's welcome to attend, by the way. It's at noon in the common room at the Manitoba Indigenous Law Students Association over at the University of Manitoba. Thank you for watching the CBC Manitoba YouTube channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. For the latest breaking news and top stories, download the CBC News app.